Olympics had happened in the middle of COVID. And uh, I was doing something related to COVID. And years ago when I wanted to study mass comm, at that time in the country, there were no bachelor courses. Number of deaths and it was very serious news. In the middle of that, we got breaking news of uh, Neeraj, Neeraj Chopra winning the gold. Welcome to the Social Listening Podcast, where curiosity meets connection. I am your host, Dashita Rohra, and together we'll explore diverse topics and insights to learn, grow, and thrive. Let us dive into the world of anchoring as we speak to our guest, Sahazama Ma'am, for today's episode. So, thank you, ma'am, for being with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me here. And I, I love your little set you've made up with some great books as well. So, thank you. So, before diving into the technical questions, I would like to know about your personal life and how actually you led into the field of journalism. Okay. Was it always your childhood dream or did you get motivated from somewhere? Uh, that's a nice question because now one really doesn't get to answer questions on what was the starting point. You know, when, when you've been working for so many years, people always ask uh, about your work experience as such. So, I, I like that as a first question. That's nice, Darshita. Uh, so, um, I, I was very active in school in public speaking. I was very actively involved right from school and college in debate competitions, in declamation, in anchoring festivals in school and college. So, I like the idea of speaking on the mic and being on stage, public speaking. I, I was very interested in And then I was interested in... Um, it, it just worked out to be a combination. I, was, I, was in, I, I liked public speaking uh, and then I liked... Uh, Working on the camera, I was very much involved in photography uh, and I was interested in current affairs. I would read the newspaper and keep up with the news a lot. So all of these three things just worked out as a combination for uh, mass comm or journalism, you know. And um, 20 years ago when I wanted to study mass comm, at that time in the country there were no bachelor courses mm -hmm. for journalism and mass comm. There were only master's courses and bachelor courses started much later, like now you have them across the country. But at my time they weren't there. So in my mind I always wanted to be in the media, I always wanted to be a journalist. But um, I had to wait three years. So I did a bachelor's in science because okay. I was a science student. So I had to wait three years till I did my master's in communication. And then I did a, uh, a PG diploma course, which was um, an exhaustive, detailed uh, specialization course just in television journalism. So I, I did that eventually, but I had to kill three years of bachelor's time for that. And then uh, immediately I got into uh, the field. I started working soon after that. So I started very early. I started when I was 21 years old. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so in these uh, so many years, we have always seen that journalists have a huge responsibility where they need to deliver the news, but keep the audience engaged at the same time. Right. So how do you manage that? I think the key for that or the rather trick for that is uh, to, to speak to the camera as if you're speaking to a living person. Mm -hmm. When you speak to the camera, you don't treat it as an inanimate object. You treat it as um, as your viewer that you're speaking with. You're, you're, you should be aware of the fact that speaking to the camera means that you're speaking to a real person behind the lens. Especially on television when your shows are beamed across a million homes. There are a million homes sitting and watching you. So you should be aware of that, that you're speaking to a person. So that's how you bring in, bring in a, a, a responsibility. Like when you speak to a person, you speak responsibly. Uh, and when you're having a conversation with a real person, uh, you're engaging that person, involving that person in your conversation. So that's a very uh, one important aspect that you treat your camera as a real person in having a real conversation. Uh, in uh, terms of uh, content that you're speaking uh, about, uh, it depends on uh, how you're going to deliver it. Deliver matlab in the sense how you're going to communicate that. So if it's an uh, entertainment bit of news, you will be slightly more animated and there's more freedom to expand your body language when you're doing a serious news piece or you're reporting someone's death, obviously the mood is going to be very different. So whatever your human response is to a story, uh, that should be your human response while you're speaking to the camera as well. So that is how you keep your audience engaged. So as you just talked about different topics that you talk about in, in the television, sometimes you need to talk about politics or sometimes right. you're talking about the rising issues yeah. and then you're talking uh, about uh, art, food or uh, different topics in the Huna TV. Right. At the cultural biggest yeah. cultural TV web news channel. Yeah. So, how do you keep switching between them? Like, isn't isn't it difficult to keep switching between the topics? 
Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it can be difficult in the beginning, uh, but you get used to it when you keep doing it on a daily basis. Um, uh, it, it's, it's difficult in the sense that you have to be conscious of the mood of the story. Uh, you can't be laughing when you're talking about someone's death. Mm -hmm. And that will automatically come once you start feeling for the story. You know, uh, if you're, um, like I explained earlier in the class as well, that um, if, if I'm talking about uh, a, a tragedy, a human tragedy, a building collapse that has taken place, and a lot of people are trapped under the debris, uh, you will obviously be very serious and uh, sympathetic towards the accident. Uh, so mood changes become easier. Mm -hmm. Switching moods becomes easier once you start feeling for every story, like you start relating to it and really understanding every story. Then it's it's more natural to switch moods. You know? yeah. Also, like uh, there was a multimedia performance by you called uh, Jashne Talat, in the memory yes. of your grand uncle and a film star Talat Memu. Right. So, right. what is the backstory about it? Like, how did you actually know about that? Very nice. Yeah. Uh, the backstory is very emotional. Uh, this was, of course, for uh, it, it started out as a tribute for my grand uncle uh, because he was such a big film star and he was he's a legend now because he was a golden era legend mm -hmm. and uh, award winning. He's, he was given the Padma Bhushan by the government of India and a commemorative stamp dedicated to him as well. So, one, that he was a legendary personality, and there, I, I wanted to reintroduce his music to the newer generation. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea of starting Krishna Um So it started as a, an emotional uh, tribute platform for his music. Uh, but gradually down the years, uh, since I've uh, uh, traveled across different cities and done this, I've at least traveled to all the big metros and had one performance each in all of these metros and got really the youth involved. The youth factor was very important here. So it, it started as an emotional tribute and it turned into this mission of reintroducing golden era music to the youngsters. So it became that kind of a cause, you know. So as we talk about youth, we see in nowadays, AI and digital media has taken over the world. Actually, Yeah, so how is news industry being affected by that? What is your take in that? A news industry will be impacted, but we still need to figure how we can use it positively. Mm -hmm. uh, because it has a huge negative impact. Uh, I don't want reporters uh, clicking on chat GPT to write their report. I, I don't want AI anchors to be in our studios because... Uh, I don't know uh, if it's a kind of a resistance of old world people, uh, which is us. Uh, but I, I think we have to be very careful in knowing how to use it to our benefit, to use it positively. Mm -hmm. Because uh, especially when you do live news, um, AI has to be fed. So there still has to be one person writing the script. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the uh, when the AI anchor is fed, it, uh, you need a certain amount of time. So the piece gets dated, otherwise, or if you're feeding information to a live person, to a live mm -hmm. anchor, I can give you the information there and there. That cannot really happen with AI because it takes time to feed the script and then give it out. So I think that delay could be there. And news is about all of us. It's about real people. So I, I, I don't know why a robot should be doing that. You know, I mean, I, I still Definitely. need to uh, wrap my head around how um, a robotic effort can help. Uh, real news. I, I think, and we have to be very careful in making sure that it is used positively. It, it shouldn't uh, be a means to spread fake news. When, when I say use carefully, I think the biggest fear that we all have is that it shouldn't be used to uh, spread fake news uh, and it shouldn't be used for uh, misinformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a bigger concern. So we have seen breaking news is a crucial part of news industry. Like mm -hmm. Every time there's a new news, you need to change the topic, you need to change the mood of the whole set. Right, right. So how do you keep up with that? If there's any sudden change during the topics, how do you keep up with that? Um, so this is where uh, experience comes in hand. Um, I've had a lot of breaking news in the middle of uh, different news that I'm doing, <laughs> or also in the middle of uh, a very serious panel discussion. Like I remember I was... Um, and the mood can change immediately, you know. So I, I was doing a panel discussion on uh, political news. Mm -hmm. And um, it was COVID, of course, because uh, our Olympics had happened in the middle of COVID. And uh, I was doing something related to COVID and number of deaths. And it was very serious news. And in the middle of that, we got breaking news of uh, Neeraj, Neeraj Chopra winning the gold. Mm -hmm. I was 
it's a completely contrasting mood. It's it's a different mood. It's a, it's the other ed, uh, edge of the spectrum. Here is a tragedy that you're speaking about, and then suddenly you're talking about a, a gold medal in that category. And this was about creating history. No one had ever won gold in the athletic category. So. Um, uh, one had to just drastically change the news. So what helps is when the breaking news bumper comes on air, mm -hmm. you know, that sting, that visual sting that comes as breaking news bumper. So that kind of gives you a break to change your expression. And then you have to say that, well, we have to switch focus. Like, let me show a live example. I'm talking about COVID and I'm talking about tragedy and I'm very serious and very, very, very morose about it. And then suddenly I get the breaking news and here the bumper comes up and then I look down. Looking down always helps because you break that eye connect and you recreate an eye connect with a different mood. So you look down and you break that eye connect and then I look up and said, uh, okay, we'll, we'll have to break away from uh, this and give you some updates that are coming in from Tokyo. And uh, we have some incredible news that's coming in. So as you're speaking, you are gradually smiling, smiling and changing yes. your expression. So. That's how you do it. <laughs> is there any particular story or any particular instance that you happen to remember that changed anybody's life? Like, um, well, these decades and everything. Um, fortunately, a lot of times mm -hmm. uh, I've I've done I've had the great fortune of doing the stories uh, that have helped people. Um, like, um, there was a slum cluster which was being demolished, mm -hmm. and uh, we had to petition the state government to. Uh, provide them uh, to compensate or to provide them alternate accommodation. So that became a huge campaign that we were talking about every day on our shows. Okay. And we went to the the housing minister, then we went to the state home minister, then we went to the chief minister. We spoke about it every day, we called them for our shows every day, and we played out a lot of victim voices. Because when you're, when you're speaking for a cause, it's important that uh, the voice of the victim gets heard. So we were speaking to these slum uh, dwellers who were crying and they were saying that our basti ujjar gai, our house was broken and we didn't compensation in the government, what was the government And then they started crying and then there were children uh, living on the street which, who were left without a house or without a roof or without mm -hmm. a shelter. So all of that became part of the campaign and we kind of petitioned the state government in providing compensation or providing them alternate accommodation. That's just one of the examples. Um, we have helped in reopening of cases. I remember there was a lot of a media campaign which was responsible for the Jessica Lal murder case to be reopened. That was a big campaign and that was I think a collective campaign of a lot of different channels as well. So we just collectively worked towards that. So the entire case which had uh, declared no one was involved in her murder, everyone was uh, acquitted, uh, was reopened and re-investigated and argued in court till eventually the the murderer was put to jail, caught and put to jail. So that was a huge impact. And there have been various others, uh, students protesting in terms of medical students protesting for reservation category um, uh, when you speak to the concerned ministry. So, you know, the, being a journalist and being in the media is a huge responsibility and you have to carry that responsibility with a lot of um, dignity. You can't carry it lightly because you are... Um, affecting lives nice. uh, and you are helping lives. Affecting lives doesn't necessarily mean helping, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, you could pick up a story without verifying it and say that, okay, he was there at the crime scene, this chap is the murderer, put him behind bars, or media pressure, mein police say, this is the murderer, this is the murderer, this is And he could be innocent, but you've picked up a piece of information without verifying it and you have ruined a life. Mm -hmm. So you must always be res responsible that the impact of your work should be uh, positive on a person's life. Or if a criminal is caught free, the criminal has to be caught and put behind bars. So there are various instances and I, I feel very blessed that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, through journalism one has managed to make a change in certain cases. In certain cases yeah. And where do you see yourself in future working still as a journalist, as a TV news anchor? What um, do you feel like? Well, see, journalism... Um, I think whoever comes into this profession comes uh, with uh, with a passion uh, and really believing in journalism. So I, I never look at journalism as a job. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. I, I look at it as a responsibility. I look at it as a cause that I picked up in my life. I, I I look at it as a passion. So I'll always be in journalism, of course. I I don't see myself going anywhere else. But uh, uh, but maybe my role can change. I'm a news editor and anchor today. I will continue being a reporter. I could I could be a proprietor, owner of a channel. I mean, my role within the profession would change, but my profession, profession will still remain journalism. I mean, there is always a story to be written. There is always a story to be reported. So that doesn't change. Yeah. And what would be the one piece of advice for new aspiring journalists that you see, like us? Um, one piece of advice is, uh, especially in today's age, um, uh, never fall for fake news. Uh, please always verify your information. And um, it's it's okay to like to be fond of being in front of the camera or to think that I just want to be a news anchor. Uh, but uh, always uh, look at yourself as a reporter first, as as a responsible person giving a piece of information and verifying it. Very important to verify to to not fall into the trap of fake news because um, um, I must say that. Uh, fake news has become very powerful yeah, yes. and the, the power of fake news is such that it takes a lot of experienced journalists like us as well to uh, double verify triple verify where this information is coming from so that becomes very important and uh, don't look at yourself as just a news editor or just a reporter or just an anchor giving the news on camera um, look at yourself holistically. Always look at yourself as a journalist, and these are just parts of the larger picture. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much, ma'am, for your time, and thank it was you. really inspiring listening to you. Oh, I liked your questions. <laughs> they were very nice. They really took me back on my journey. So okay. that was really nice. I'm thankful you liked. Thank you. We are grateful to have you here, and I hope the listeners must have learned something from the very inspiring personality over here. Thank you so much.